Good morning, Mon Petit. Well, it is a beautiful blue sky day today, which always puts me in the best mood. I had my usual Saturday morning routine. Went for my run, been doing my little house chores, my like pottering and tidying, and I've just been getting myself ready for the day. Going a little bit glam today because we have a day of birthday celebrations on the cards, which is going to be so, so lovely for my little brother, which, as I mentioned, our birthdays are a week apart. So we always love this because it always feels like one weekend is his birthday and then one weekend is like my birthday and it's quite nice for me because it always feels like it's building up to my birthday celebrations if you know what I mean so just been doing my makeup got my little jewelry on I've still got actually my discount code with Monica Vanilla which I know so many of you guys have been using and loving I've got this really cute little heart necklace on from Monica Vanilla at the moment they do this in gold as well which I think would be so so cute for summer styling like summer gold jewelry I've been really loving gold recently but today I was just feeling a few silver pieces so if you use the code petite ellie m Petite Ellie MV20, but it's Petite Ellie without two E's on the end, which I know is really confusing. So literally the word Petite, the word Ellie MV20. I'll leave it down below in the description if you do want to check it out and have a little shop at 20% off because it's so amazing being able to get Monica Vanilla jewelry pieces for 20% discount. I feel like they never normally offer this. And the fact that they've offered this discount code for such a long time, I feel very honored that you guys are able to shop the pieces at a discount. So as I said, just getting myself ready. And I actually, received yesterday a new delivery that I thought we could unbox this morning from Lancome. Now this is the Lancome Hypnose Drama which sounds really really exciting and I must admit I do love the Lancome Hypnose range. They've got a few different things in the Hypnose range and I absolutely adore it. So I'm guessing it might be a new mascara launch from Lancome but I thought we could discover, ooh, discover the collection together. Oh my goodness me, look at what's inside of here. This is such a generous delivery. But it looks like this is all of the products that are in the Hypnose range. So we have the Sills Booster, the Icon Hypnose, the new and improved Hypnose Drama, and the Bi Facial. And I must admit, if you are someone who wears especially like waterproof mascaras and eye makeup that really, really struggles to come off, this is the best eye makeup remover I have ever, ever used. It's the Bi Facial Non-Oily Instant Cleanser for sensitive eyes. And I have very, very sensitive eyes and I don't find this stingy at all. Sometimes I can be really lazy. And I literally just use my cleanser to take off my makeup. But that's usually on the days where I've not been wearing mascara. I don't really have anything too heavy on my eyes. Whereas if I have something heavy, I like to use this one. Because as you can see, you just kind of have to like mix it up together. And it creates this almost like blue, cloudy like liquid which I really love and it's not oily at all I don't find that it stings on your eyes and the best way to take it off is just with a reusable cotton pad so I definitely recommend picking this up if you are someone with sensitive eyes if you wear a lot of eye makeup this is such a good one I'm also really excited to discover the new and improved hypnose I mean look at this packaging I don't know if you're going to be able to see it but it's got this like twist to the packaging, which I'm guessing is going to be kind of related to the actual mascara one. I'm guessing the one is going to be a little bit twisted. <gasps> Look at that. That is absolutely incredible. The literal mascara wand trying to cover my face. If ever you're wondering why beauty bloggers do this, it's because the camera always wants to like focus on my face. So if I want it to focus on something that's not my face, I basically have to cover it up. There we go. <gasps> Look at that. Can you see the way it like twists round? That is absolutely incredible. So I'm guessing that's going to give all the volume and all the drama, which sounds absolutely amazing. We also have in here the Icon, the Hypnose Mascara. Now, this was actually, I'm pretty sure, the first mascara I ever tried from Lancome and was one of the products that just got me absolutely hooked on Lancome. And I love their beauty products. I feel like they have so many gorgeous makeup bits and the Lancome Mascara is absolutely beautiful. So I definitely recommend it. checking that out. If you like more of like, quite a full that like you can kind of see from the lovely beautiful model who is modeling it perfectly here it's very much about that like full dramatic lash but not clumpy like it's not the kind where you look like you've got halloween makeup on it do you know what i mean like it's very very full and i'm quite excited to discover this sills booster so it says here combine with the hypnose drama for up to 21 times more volume which just sounds absolutely insane. We've got a lot of stats here about the actual mascaras themselves. So the normal Hypnose Mascara apparently is day to night buildable volume. And the new and improved Hypnose Drama is 17 times more volume after two coats, which is just absolutely insane. So I'm really excited about this because it looks like it's literally like a white mascara. and I've never really tried that before, but apply this to your lashes first and then apply the actual Hypnose. 
sounds incredible. Maybe we can do that for later on tonight before we head out for the birthday celebrations and I can do a little bit of a makeup top up, but some lovely deliveries from Lancome to start the weekend. So perfect to add into my summer makeup. Would you look at that sunshine? It just feels like such a beautiful spring day in May. You've got a little bit of a light breeze, beautiful sunny weather. It's just my favorite kind of day. And I've just come outside to do a little bit of a kind of garden peruse. I always love just having a little stock taking session off the garden, a little walk around. I don't know if you can hear. One of our neighbors has installed wind chimes and it's the loveliest sound ever. So we've got one neighbor with a pond and you can just hear the sound trickling running water and one neighbor with a wind chime, which is honestly just the loveliest thing ever. But seeing as though we are coming to the end of May and I know I did a big old garden tour when we first started Everyday May, I thought it might be quite nice to show kind of how it's looking now and give like a little bit of a month's difference. I'm not gonna lie, one thing I will say is it hasn't quite changed as much as I was maybe hoping that it would. And I think I really need to take stock of just how much of a process gardening is. Like it really does take a lot of time. It takes a lot of patience. I think I've heard a saying where it said like something like, gardening is having faith in the future or something because obviously everything that you do when it comes to gardening is a waiting game basically like whenever you plant something it's never going to come up quickly like you're never going to see results overnight you have to wait weeks if not months sometimes even years for things to look beautiful and i need to remind myself of that and i kind of just want to get the garden to a place where i'm like oh it's our dream garden already and it's going to take such a long time to get it to being our dream country cottage garden and it is a process and it's a process I really enjoy, so I just need to enjoy the process, enjoy the journey that we're going on. But let me show you how it's looking because already it is looking so different. I mean, to start with, the grass, the lawn is really come into its own, which makes me so, so happy. Let me pop a photo here of what it looked like when we first started every day in May, when we first kind of like laid the seeds and we were waiting for it to grow in because, oh my gosh, what a difference it makes. It's looking so lengthy. I am definitely desperate for Alex to cut the grass but I've been told we're not allowed to cut it yet because there is still a few little bits that need to grow and there's still a few little patches that are quite short um so he said that we need to leave it basically as long as possible just keep watering it keep maintaining it and then fingers crossed just before my birthday he's going to mow it so it's looking beautiful for when we have friends and family over because we have got some friends and family coming around for some birthday celebrations which will be so so lovely and we just want to make sure the garden is looking its best which at the moment the grass is looking amazing in the sense of it's so full like if you look over here it's kind of mad to think that this was literally just concrete slabs like this was exactly what this is it was just a patio that kind of like came out in this weird like stepping stone shape you can kind of if you look closely just about see the difference but once this is all mowed you're not going to be able to tell which is the new grass and which is the old grass um, but this new grass has just grown in so thick which is honestly amazing to see and over there in that corner that was completely been reboarded like that came out really really far the only thing is we do seem to have a little bit of a patch over here if i show you it does seem like the wild garlic is growing back look at this a little patch of wild garlic that is climbing through and i know so many of you did say that we really need to make sure we get rid of it all and we thought we did but it looks like we still have a little bit in the grass that we're going to need to sort out if anyone has any tips on getting rid of wild garlic please do let me know because it's so invasive and we don't want it taking over the garden this was kind of the border over here that we ended up taking up and moving over here so it was this hydrangea this rhododendron and this hydrangea down here they were all over here and some of them were completely wrapped around the bulbs of the wild garlic they were taking over the roots of the hydrangea so i'm so glad we saved them because i don't think they would have lasted that much longer um but yeah it really is an invasive species and i know especially when people make recipes out of it they love it but when it's in your garden it's not a fun one to have it's almost as invasive as bamboo like it's absolutely crazy so yeah if anyone has any tips let me know and speaking of wild garlic actually i think we have some wild garlic over here this has grown so quickly and it's made me so suspicious of how fast it has shot up. I mean, it's literally been about a week since I noticed shoots over here and it's grown so fast. I think it's because we've had quite a big mixture of sunshine and showers. That's obviously the perfect kind of like growing weather and like the perfect climate for it to grow. So it's just boomed. I mean, there's no flowers on it but i do remember there being a bit of wild garlic over here that we tried to dig out so i think potentially i missed quite a bit and it has just 
flourished over in this corner so I'm really going to need to get out my shovel and dig this out because I do not want this taking over the entirety of the borders unfortunately it seems to already have taken over my hydrangea actually look at my hydrangea it's really sad it just got eaten alive by slugs can you see that oh it's heartbreaking it's the kind of thing that it almost makes you feel like you failed as a gardener like I know that sounds so silly and it's not until I watch things like Gardener's World where Monty Dom talks about a plant that's maybe been eaten alive or that's something that's not survived that you remind yourself that this happens in everyone's garden but it's really hard not to be gutted about it when it happens in yours so um yeah I think this wild garlic might potentially take over this if I let it so we're really going to need to sort that out um but excitingly over in this corner as you can see the honeysuckle has blossomed which I can tell you now it smells incredible absolutely incredible and it's such an established plant like look at how high it's trying to climb I'm really trying to train it to kind of climb towards the house instead of up because it doesn't have anywhere to go if it tries to go up so I'm going to need to get on my step ladder and basically sort that I need to have a big old gardening weekend again because a lot has changed in the space of a month and a lot needs a little bit of maintenance a lot needs a little bit of pruning like I feel like there's a lot here that can really do with just like being pruned back it's so lovely having such an established plant because it means that you've got that kind of like building block to go from but I do find that especially when they've been left to their own devices for such a long time they need a lot of maintenance this honeysuckle really reminds me of the wisteria when we first moved in to our old house and that wisteria needed so much maintenance it needed so much like time and energy put into it to get it to climb so i'm planning on doing the same with this honeysuckle but i love it because honestly you open the kitchen doors and you can just get the smell through running through the kitchen it's absolutely incredible one thing that I need to do as well in my little gardening weekend is move one of these lavenders. A couple of you guys said that I put them too close together and I thought I gave them a bit of room. I know that lavender grows but I didn't think it would grow that much. So many of you said no no they are going to completely grow into each other and they're not going to have any space to breathe so I'm just going to pop that one over just a little bit. A few of you have suggested a meter difference which is hard to do when they look like this and you just think like oh goodness me that's so much space and then you see them growing you're like okay that is why but I'm really excited for those to grow. I also need to plant out my child actually I've not had a chance to do that yet um, but another unfortunate garden failure <laughs> I feel like this is just me admitting all the things that I've done wrong in this garden so far um, but my hydrangea has not made it which is really really sad a couple of you said that you think it's actually because it just got put out in the sun too quickly and it was just in a little bit of shock and maybe that is why because it was still quite cold when we first got it and then it got warm quite quickly and obviously this is in complete sunlight like 24 7 um so i think maybe that might be why but it's really sad to see like the leaves have gone really crispy i think we're gonna need to take it out of this pot and basically cut my losses and accept that this one did not work which is such a shame and i still have hope for this one over here i can't remember the name of this hydrangea but it's the one where it's like in a bit more of a cone shape and i'm really excited for that to come through because i've never had that hydrangea before and this one seems to be doing really really well i've been watering it so so much as you can see i put slug pellets down because i know that um, slugs really like hydrangeas and i want to make sure that this one does not get eaten alive so it's a little bit windy so i hope you can hear me i'm not gonna lie it's such a welcome breeze it's so lovely um so yeah i need to kind of rearrange this situation over here before we have our friends over for our birthday i think i'm going to need to do a big old gardening date just before my birthday so that we can really get this like organized and sorted before we have our friends and then let's have a look at what's going on in this border over here. Unfortunately, it looks like my delphinium. It's not doing the best. This one seems to be okay, but maybe this one has been attacked a little bit by the wind because this one is right on the edge. And as you can hear, it does get quite a lot of wind in this garden. It's quite nice how open the garden is because it does mean that we get the loveliest breeze and hopefully in summer, it's gonna be a very welcome breeze. But we do have some new buds that are coming up. So I'm hoping this guy, it's going to do well and he's really going to shoot but look at his leaves i'm not entirely sure what to do with that maybe he needs a little bit more water i might give this a quick little water tonight um it's interesting because obviously it's such a new border i don't know what the drainage is like in here so i never want to like over water things i'm notorious for over watering my plants so i don't want to make the opposite mistake and underwater them and um, the sweet peas seem to be doing really really well they are glow growing up the climbers which is so lovely to see and hopefully they're going to go really really tall i always love sweet peas every summer they're just my absolute favorites and it's going to be so fun being able to bring them in cut them back because obviously they are cut and come again flowers so i might just tie them up a little bit more just to kind of help them as they're going up the climbers i can't wait to see how they do um we then have these lupins which okay this is what's really really upsetting so many of my plants have been attacked by slugs not only have the hydrangeas but also as you can see these lupin leaves have been a little bit attacked you can see from the blue 
I have put some slug pellets down to try and deter them because it's just so upsetting seeing your plants being eaten alive like this. Like you've spent so much time, so much effort, so much money on them and you just want to see them thrive. So hopefully he's going to be okay. Um, this allium doesn't seem to have been attacked, which is good. And from the looks of things, it is so, so close to blooming. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Fingers crossed we're going to have beauty, beautiful little allium bubbles just in time for my birthday. We also have a blooming flower from my climbing hydrangea, which is very exciting. I've never actually seen these kind of petals before, these flowers. Is this what it normally looks like? I was expecting them to all be like that, but it's really, really cool to see. It's really beautiful. They almost look like little snowflakes. Is that what it looks like just before it blooms? Not entirely sure, but um, it's really lovely to see. It's so nice having the height from the um, foxgloves and the hydrangea. I just love having different like heights in my garden and just kind of like different textures. Um, but we've got another lupin I'm waiting on growing. This delphinium again has been a little bit eaten alive, which is just honestly, it's so heartbreaking to see. Do you think I need to cut these um, these leaves that have been attacked? Will that help him grow? Maybe I need to do that. Let me know. I need to um, string up these sweet peas as well because these seem to be growing a little bit quicker than the others actually, which is quite funny to see, but they seem to be doing so, so well, which is really, really exciting. Um, then we have another delphinium, which as you can see, eaten alive it's honestly so gutting and they even try to have a little munch at these alliums over here but he's a fighter look at him we have a bloom that is just about to come i'm so so excited for that so um yes hopefully not long now this border is going to be absolutely beautiful hopefully things are going to really bloom they're going to really take shape and we're just going to be filled with so many gorgeous summer flowers to anyone that's not a gardener, it's probably going to sound really silly to say that you're heartbroken over plants, but seeing them getting eaten alive is just so upsetting. Like, it's so gutting seeing how much the slugs have munched away. Like, I have my hydrangea pot up there, which I kind of thought it would be safe being in a pot. Really, really naively thought it would be okay. And I think it is just because the owners before us were not gardeners and this garden hasn't really been maintained. So I think, like, the slugs and the snails have been let loose. Like, they've been allowed to run wild for such a long period of time time um so they've been getting into every crevice every plant that we have even like the established ones i can see at the bottom where they've like munched away but i had a hydrangea over there which was this close to flowering like it was so so close to blooming and i came out the other day and clearly someone had had a feast in my hydrangea pot and i couldn't even find where the slug was it seems to be coming back so hopefully it will be able to redeem itself i've given it some hydrangea feed i've given it a good water one thing i will say about hydrangeas my goodness me are they thirsty <laughs> like they always require so much watering um but yeah i feel like it's really reminded me just how much of a process it is when it comes to gardening and I know it will get there eventually and I know whenever I see people's gardens, actually I love the people on TikTok that kind of remind you, they're like, okay, if you're in the thick of it right now, if you're in the thick of a reno or you're doing your gardening or anything like that, remember, this has taken me five years to get here. Like we've been in this house for four years, for six years, for three years and I just need to remind myself of that. We've only been in this house for three months, not three years and so it's gonna take a lot longer to get our garden to a place where it is our dream country garden i mean i haven't even started on the kitchen garden yet i have so many plans for that which i'm so so excited about so um yeah we're gonna get there eventually and it's already looking so much better than it did at the start of may it's already been so much progress and hopefully throughout june july august throughout the summer months we're just going to be able to hopefully fingers crossed we're gonna have nice weather we're gonna be able to get out into the garden and just let it flourish which i'm really looking forward to I'm not gonna lie, I'm not entirely sure how long today's vlog is going to be because the birthday celebrations are about to begin and obviously being around my family, I'm not really gonna be vlogging all that much whilst I'm out with them, but I do need to head upstairs and get myself ready to go because we do have a really fun afternoon at plan. So we're heading out to an escape room, which I am not the biggest escape room kind of a person. I'm not really very good at like puzzles. I don't know if it's the dyslexic in me. I don't really know what it is, but I'm always there for the vibes. Like if I'm with people that love a puzzle, love doing an escape room I'll be their hype girl and be like yes you solved that mystery let's get out of this room so my brother loves an escape room so we're doing that and then we are heading out for drinks and then we're going out for dinner tonight at the dancing man which is one of my favorite restaurants and favorite pubs here in Hampshire it's in Southampton and it's like right on the kind of um I don't want to say shorefront it's really close actually to the ferry terminal so if you're ever coming over to the Isle of Wight 
I would definitely recommend heading to the Dancing Man at first. It's the most beautiful old pub. I think it's actually one of the oldest pubs in the UK, if I remember correctly. And it's this stunning building to the point of it's so old, they're not even allowed to have a fryer. So there's actually no chips on premise. So there's nothing that is fried. There's nothing that is like in like a deep fat fryer or anything like that because they can't have it because of the regulations needed in the building. I remember getting chatting to a waitress once and she told me that. And I thought that was so interesting. But downstairs is like a beautiful old pub. It's absolutely stunning. They have like all of the ales that you can ever want. And if anything, if anyone is anything like my my lovely fiance, they love an ale. Alex loves trying, like I swear every time we go, he's like, which ale shall I try today? Um, and he loves trying the different like beers and things like that. And I, it just whoosh goes completely over my head, but they have lovely drinks there, lovely gin and tonics and non-alcoholic drinks and things like that. Um, so it's really lovely to pop there. And then upstairs is the restaurant. And I'm pretty sure they actually hire it out for weddings as well which i think is really cool if you would have like a really intimate wedding like 30 people or less would be so so amazing but it's beautiful it's like wooden beams these like huge oak beams are absolutely stunning and inside is just absolutely gorgeous so we're heading there tonight for dinner which should be so so lovely so i've got all the gifts ready to go i've got all the presents wrapped and ready card is written and that's good to go and then we've got the cake which honestly i'm just so excited to bring this over i'm not gonna lie to you because i've cut off these bits at the end alex and i did have a cheeky little taste test last night after dinner and not to toot my own horn but i can confirm that it is pretty darn good and i'm actually really really impressed mary berry you have saved me with an amazing fairly simple fairly easy recipe but i do think it's the jam she did say in the recipe as well like if you're using any kind of jam make sure it's a really really high quality one because it will make all the difference i think the strawberry and rose petal jam from the newt in somerset has just made all the difference like the rose petals really come through i think this is the perfect kind of cake to have with like an afternoon tea just like as a little afternoon snack with a coffee it's a great one to bring as like a little extra one because as i said we already have the birthday cake this isn't birthday cake this is just an extra little treat for everyone to enjoy i think it's a good one as well actually especially when you're just like opening presents you just kind of want to have like a little a little birthday celebration before the actual birthday cake comes out and before all of the singing starts um but i do feel like as well the icing sugar on top makes such a big difference just in terms of like a aesthetic doesn't really do anything to taste but i just think it elevates it i think the only thing i need to do now is invest in a round cake tin because that's the only thing that i think makes a big difference the fact that it's a weird square and not like a traditional circle would have made it a 10 out of 10 even in terms of visuals like i mean it's a victoria sponge we're not expecting miracles here we're not expecting it to look like a gourmet cake um but i do think if it was a circle it would have made so much difference so um yeah everything is ready to go for the birthday celebrations to start i'm just going to run upstairs and quickly top up my makeup get changed and then we're good to go right super quick little makeup top up i'm not gonna lie i really love using the pixie on the glow blushes and bronzers for a little top up because you can literally just use your fingers it blends so quickly and i must admit i feel like adding a little flush of blush just really helps with like the elevation of your face you know when you've kind of been wearing your makeup like all day it's starting to look a little bit tired you're looking a little bit i don't know about you but i just go a little bit pale and i feel like adding a little bit of blush just makes all the difference i'm also going to go in because i really love a little matchy matchy with the lip glow it's in the shade of ruby and it's just a really really nice one it's quite nice because it feels more like a lip stain i would definitely recommend dotting it on instead of like going hell for leather like sliding it across because i do find it's quite an intense one if you put it on too much but because it's quite a stainy one it just means it's better when you're like eating and drinking i don't really have to think about topping it up as much and i'm kind of tempted to do a little bit of mascara because i feel like we can just elevate this look a little bit so we're gonna go in with the nope the new one the hit nose drama which i'm really looking forward to i'm not gonna go in with the white one instead just because i think that might be a little bit much but just do a little stroke or oh, already i'm seeing a difference in my lashes can you see that <gasps> the way it just pulls them up oh that is stunning i feel like it's been such a long time since i've been like really impressed with a mascara i mean i have lvl on but even then it like adds volume it adds lift it adds so much drama that is literally exactly what it's called that i mean the hypnose drama mascara don't you just love it when something does exactly what it says on the tin? I feel like that really helps just to like elevate the look a little bit. It's been a long time since I've seen my lashes look that fierce. Oh my goodness. I am really, really impressed with that. And I don't have any smudging at the top of my lids either, which as a girl with hooded eyes, I usually do get. I'm not going to lie. So 
quick little makeup touch up done literally just two second and then perfume i'm gonna go for scarlet poppy we're really feeling the like ruby scarlet red vibes today apparently we're gonna go for scarlet poppy because it's a really really lovely one it's like an evening perfume but like a summertime evening perfume i really really like it it's fresh it's floral it's a little bit sultry and a little bit sexy so i really really like it this is the limited edition packaging but it does come in the normal packaging this one's just about a year old now but i still absolutely love it and still absolutely but i still absolutely love it i just love the fragrance of it it's just oh so so lovely so let me show you my outfit of the day before we head on out for a lovely birthday celebration so outfit of the afternoon slash evening this is very much like a a day to night kind of a look that i need to like make last for both of them which is what i feel like this makeup is it's very much like a day to night kind of makeup look um but i brought the hops jacket back out i couldn't help it i just love this jacket so so much it's so many compliments every time i've worn it and i know so many of you guys have shopped through my link i can always see how many of you are shopping and what you're purchasing and i just love when like we hit the nail on the head Do you know what i mean when there's something that you guys just absolutely adore as much as i do and so many of you have been shopping this jacket in fact it does actually come with a really cute little matching dress if you're into like your mini dresses it's absolutely adorable it's kind of like a tweedy like it's a really really similar material to this with this kind of like gorgeous like tweed almost like canvas material which is absolutely stunning i wish it came in a midi i'm just really not a mini girl anymore if it came in a midi dress i would snap that up in a heartbeat but i do love the jacket even by itself i love it when that places do like a matchy matchy but can be worn individually kind of moment that's what i really really love about this jacket so we've brought the hobbs jacket back out i will leave it linked down below if you do want to shop it and then i'm trying to make it a little bit more eveningy with the outfit that i've got on underneath so i've just gone for a little black slip skirt which number one is so comfy and stretchy i love it for an evening meal because you can eat all the gluten you can eat all of the good stuff you can bloat to your heart's content and you're still going to be comfortable in this skirt i've also gone for the new look slingbacks which this is exactly the reason why i wanted to get these because obviously for an evening meal you want to look a little bit more dressed up you want to look a little bit more elevated but i don't necessarily want to be wearing heels especially because around the dancing man it's all couples <laughs> and that is not easy to walk on when you've got high heels on so we've got the little slingback flats which are just perfect for daytime but also perfect for evening they can be worn both ways which is what i absolutely love i've literally just got the same top on that i had underneath a little tank top i've been wearing that so much recently i really really love it it's just so lovely to have your arms out but still that kind of high neckline and i think it matches so perfectly with the jacket i love seeing that like a pop of black popping out from underneath same jewelry that i had on and then to match with the jewelry we've gone for my little long short hobo bag which you know i love mixing that but sometimes there's something so satisfying about just like keeping it really classy and really tailored together and having like an all all one metal color so i really really love the fact that you've got the silver strap um like the silver buckle which is just absolutely adorable so that's my outfit of the day slash afternoon slash evening ready for a lovely day of birthday celebrations for my brother so we're gonna get going now heading on out for a little afternoon of escape rooms birthday celebrations and a lovely meal so i'll catch you guys later now and oh my goodness me <laughs> i am so full i'm so tired but i'm so happy you know when you've just had the loveliest day oh wow am i looking a little bit disheveled now the hair is it's not hairing so much anymore although actually saying that the makeup is still makeuping i am really impressed that we do not have panda eyes right now because we've been laughing we've been crying we've just been through all the emotions you know when you just cannot stop talking with your family this is also what i like about the lip so i've obviously eaten loads i've drunk loads i've talked loads and usually i would find with a lot of my lipsticks is that it would be completely gone whereas i feel like i still have a little bit of color sitting on my lips right now and the fact that i don't have panda eyes is honestly amazing i feel like it's been such a long time since i've used a mascara and not ended up with like black smudges underneath my eyes so the hypnose drama might just be my new favorite mascara my old favorite mascara was the hypnose idol from lancome not hip yeah hypnose idol 
from Lancome, um, but I think it's just been trumped by the drama because it really does give that lift, it gives that definition, it gives that volume without it being clumpy, without it looking like you've got loads of mascara on, you know what I mean? Like I only really did one coat. I feel like you could really, really lengthen your lashes and just like really go hell for leather with this mascara, but it's just been such a good day. The escape room was absolutely hilarious. The meal was absolutely delicious and my brother has just had the loveliest day celebrating his birthday. It's actually tomorrow is his birthday, but we did like the family celebrations today so that he can go and see his friends tomorrow and just have a lovely day with them. So I'm gonna get myself into bed. I'm not gonna lie to you because it is quarter past nine. It's really weird that it's quarter past nine and it's still light. Just about, like just about light outside, but it really does throw me one of the things I don't like so much about summer because you know I love an early bedtime and I don't like it when it's still light outside and I want to head to bed because I'm like no it should be dark I want to get myself into my pjs I want to get myself in bed and get all cozy so if if you could just if the sun could just set sooner I'd be a lot happier <laughs> but anyway I'm talking nonsense I'm gonna get myself to bed I hope you guys enjoyed what I don't even really know what there was to vlog today. I don't really know if this has been one of the shortest vlogs. As I said, I don't really vlog a lot when I'm with my family. So I know that this is probably a bit of a shorter vlog compared to most days, but hopefully you still enjoyed it nonetheless as we are coming to the end of everyday May. I can't believe how few days we have left, honestly. It's getting me emotional just thinking about it. I don't want to start thinking about the end of everyday May because it's just been such a fun month and so lovely to do the daily vlogs. But anyway, I'm gonna get myself to bed. If you got to the end of this video, comment birthday down below so I know you got to the end and I will see you guys tomorrow. We have a really fun day tomorrow actually. I'll see you guys tomorrow for another day of everyday May. Good night!